everyone. Thank you all for taking the time to come out tonight. Honorable members of City Council, in accordance with the Virginia Beach City Code and the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Virginia Beach, I hereby call for a special formal session of the Virginia Beach City Council. On Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, at 6 p.m., City Council Chambers, Building 1, Second Floor, 2401 Courthouse Drive. The purpose of the special session is to take public comment on collective bargaining. If you wish to make comments during the meeting and participate virtually, follow the two-step process below. Register at the WebEx that has been provided and register at the city clerk's office by calling 757-385-4303 prior to 5 o'clock on Tuesday, April 9, 2024. This special session will be broadcast on cable TV and also on Facebook Live. The, uh, citizens are encouraged to submit their comments to City Council prior to special form by email at citycouncil.vbgov.com. Sincerely, Bobby Dyer. Okay, um, Council uh, Member Worth is uh, uh, on vacation, and Mrs. Henley just arrived. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, we're ready for the first speaker. The first speaker is Diana Howard. After Ms. Howard is Patricia Thebert. Sorry, Thebert. Hi, how you doing? My name's Diana Howard. I'm the chair of the Virginia Beach Tea Party and we oppose collective bargaining. Our employees and the services that they provide are what we pay taxes for. We can support them and you all should address their needs without using, um, without giving the ability to unions to dictate city policy and hold taxpayers hostage. What problem is collective bargaining going to solve that city council and the city manager cannot solve without it? While acquiring a new payroll system may be a one-time expense, the human resource personnel needed to administer them are not. Neither are the contract negotiators, lawyers, or labor relations administrator or board. Collective bargaining is adversarial at its core. You don't just sit down and negotiate a contract. In between, there are grievances, charges, labor disputes. Right now in Prince William County, the teachers union filed charges against the school board. In Florida, they're being sued for eliminating automatic payroll deductions. Think you're going to have control over your budget during a downturn in the economy? In 2011, Miami thought that. They declared a financial crisis, changing their union contracts. The police union sued them, saying that they had not done their due diligence. They hadn't fired non-union uh, employees, raised taxes, or put in street cameras. Their Supreme Court agreed with them. In 2008, Valerio, California, after two years of trying to negotiate with their union during a downturn in their economy, filed bankruptcy. In New York, when we couldn't make payroll, unions held out for the federal government to bail them out because of a clause in their contract uh, called an evergreen clause. In New York, it's called the Triborough Amendment. It basically says that a union contract doesn't expire until a new one is done. During COVID, in Cincinnati, where our city manager is from, um, during COVID, they had to lay off 1,700 employees. We didn't have to lay off anybody. So if we had union contracts during COVID, we probably would have had to do the same thing. Even though striking is not allowed, unions in other localities are threatening to walk out over what's in their ordinances. They're talking about working the rule, doing work slowdowns, calling in sick. It's not about customer service. The union didn't care about the patients in nursing home where I worked as a nurse's aide when they went out on strike and I became a scab. You know, by the way, that's the person that walks across union, union lines to do the job. So, uh, and did the teachers care about, you know, the children, the customer, when they kept schools Thank closed you, Diana. almost two years? Thank you. Appreciate it. Just say no. The next speaker is Patri Patricia Thebert, and then Sean Garrity. Good evening. Good evening. Hold on one second. I need to get <coughs> get respect. 
Okay. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I am Patricia Thiebert. I am a Behavior Specialist 1 in the Human Services Department. I have worked for the city for 15 and a half years. What does collective bargaining mean to city workers and to myself? It means that we have a voice in the policies that matter to city workers and the people that we serve. City workers know what they need and what policies will help keep them safe and the individuals that we serve, such as summer heat guidelines. We don't have them. <laughs> you know, so hold on one That will allow workers to take frequent breaks, keep hydrated. We also need those summer guidelines for the individuals that we serve, especially in the human services department and the intermediate care facilities. We shouldn't be leaving it up to common sense for the heat guidelines, because not everybody has the same common sense. Workers need a happy work-life balance. Many workers are working overtime to help out the facilities that they are working in. I personally am working Friday and Saturday doubles to ensure that we have enough workers at our, in our facility. So I'm filling that void to, you know, when we have those vacancies. Collective bargaining would help the city fill and retain the workers to allow workers not to have to work that overtime to ensure that our individuals are taken care of, which in turn would save money. You're paying me overtime instead of someone regular time. It means that when workers are called in for discipline, and possible dismissal, there is a union steward in the meeting helping that, worker, <clears throat> helping that worker navigate the process. We have, we have had workers go in for dismissal conversations and not know how to handle it and not know their rights to be able to appeal and how to use it. With collective bargaining, workers would have a steward there that would help navigate the process and be able, better able to defend themselves. I know the council has mentioned meet and confer like they do in Norfolk. That does not work. We have talked to the Norfolk workers. They don't believe they are being heard and people are afraid to actually speak on the issues that they are having. Collective bargaining allows workers in a union to neg negotiate these terms. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. The next speaker is Sean Garrity and then Brian Sullivan. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sean Garrity. I'm a 33-year resident of Virginia Beach. I'm also the executive director of the National Right to Work Committee. I'm here to speak in opposition to any attempt to impose government monopoly, union monopoly bargaining on workers and taxpayers. It's just plain wrong for workers to be forced under a union monopoly control as a condition of working in public service. Under exclusive representation, uh, which is better termed monopoly bargaining, individual workers lose the ability to choose their own representation. And this is a right that even convicted criminals retain. The fact is, government union monopoly bargaining gives public employee union bosses a second bite of the apple that's completely unique amongst all stakeholders. They not only can lobby an electioneer like everyone else, but under this bill, union bosses can legally bind the government in contracts. Now think about that. Union officials will negotiate contracts at the table with the same politicians they help to elect. And all this away from public scrutiny and without any input from taxpayers. That is a major conflict of interest. And because labor unions are largely political organizations spending upward of $2 billion in the last federal elections and are expected to pay even, spend even more this coming election, um, allowing for public sector monopoly bargaining only incentivizes union officials to become even more involved in local elections. Of course, Union officials here will say that council members can always reject a union-negotiated contract. Now, that's true. 
However, how likely is it for a city council member to vote against a union contract if the member sees their political futures tied directly to a union election activity and dark loony? The upcoming vote on this very issue will be a telling example of what I'm talking about. Any council member who votes for this is not doing so in the interest of citizens or the taxpayers. Some years ago, the Heritage Foundation found that public sector monopoly bargaining cost the average family of four as much as $3,000 per year in states that have passed it, all for, government, for all government workers. Closer to home, uh, despite having a smaller population than Virginia Beach, Loudoun County estimates it will cost $3.3 million per year in additional staff just to implement union monopoly bargaining for its school system. The fact is, this legislation will be a disaster for Virginia Beach taxpayers. Meanwhile, the people's representatives will lose the flexibility to make needed changes the next time there is a economic very much, downturn or recession. It. I say vote Thank no you. against. Thanks. The next speaker is Brian Sullivan. After Mr. Sullivan is Teresa Stanley. Good evening. Well, thank you very much. This is an unnerving situation. Um, my name is Brian Sullivan. I'm just a resident of Virginia Beach that takes an interest in the way the city is run. Um, I had uh, two points I wanted to make in support of collective bargaining. Uh, the first is, you know, we, we have our, our fire and our, our, our police department, and those guys have a risky business, risky job. You know, it, it, they deserve to have a seat at the table, be able to at least talk about safety and to talk about productivity. However, you know, I've taken an interest in some of these subjects, and at least for the past 15 years, according to our uh, Department of, of um, the, the Federal Bureau of, of Labor with OSHA, uh, one of the highest jobs that has the most risk is in waste management. And, and I bring that up, you know, because th those guys have more risk than the fire department and more risk than the police department. And I bring it up because there's a, a larger pool that is affected by this in city workers who provide essential services at high risk. And I think they really do deserve to have a seat at the table, especially to talk about safety and productivity. I imagine their families would appreciate that too. Uh, the second part would be the, the idea of productivity. Um, there was a book that came out in 2007 called The Carrot Principle, which put forward the idea that if you bring people to the table, you build a team and people on the team feel like they are valued and they have a say in what's going on, the natural byproduct is an increase in productivity, a decrease in sick time, and an increase in employee retention. And this is nothing new. This is just a repackaged idea for this generation based on research that goes all the way back to the 1920s uh, that was put on by Westinghouse at the, the, the infamous or famous uh, Hawthorne plant in, in, uh, in uh, I think it was Wisconsin or, uh, it, it, these guys were the first to get into uh, employee motivation. And one of the things that came out of that is once again, if you build a team and people have input and they feel like they're valued, productivity increases. So this is information that's been around for 100 years. It's evidence-based. It, it has been uh, used all, all over to great success. And as a taxpayer, if I'm going to be giving my money to a, a city, I'd like to see that money go towards uh, a system that is focused on increasing productivity and making the city run at a higher level. Our current system does not do that. And I, I think that really needs to look at. Thank you. Thank you. The next, the next speaker is Teresa Stanley. Teresa Stanley. After Ms. Stanley is Scott Miller. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor Dyer and City Council. My name is Kay Flory. I'm speaking on behalf of Teresa Stanley, who's unable to be here. We are representing the Interfaith Alliance of the Beach, the Tidewater Sowers of Justice, and its dismantling racism, 
working community comprised of hundreds of members to express our support for Virginia Beach City employees who seek a resolution by City Council in support of collective bargaining and not a meet and confer alternative that would undermine the trust building process necessary to move our city forward. The no strike clause makes sure that the City Council and City Management have the final say on all budget decisions, but supporting a collective bargaining process is a crucial step in giving our workers a seat at the table so that their voices are truly heard and respected. Studies have shown that workplaces with collective bargaining agreements have lower turnover rates and higher employment engagement, as well as increased safety and efficiency rates. The Virginia General Assembly approved legislation in March 2020, repealing Virginia's pro prohibition of the public sector collective bargaining. Prior to passage of this legislation, Virginia was one of only three states banning all public sector collective bargaining. The legislation allows local governments to bargain collectively with their employees upon adopting an authorizing ordinance or resolution. Collective bargaining provides a collaborative and transparent approach to allow employers and employees the opportunity to develop a process for delivering high quality services for the residents of our city. It is a moral imperative that we protect our workers to include addressing the issues of safety, dignity, living wage, and an end to institutional, ra institutional racism in the workforce. In the recent study by the Commonwealth Institute, it was determined that nine in 10 Virginia Beach city workers could not attain an adequate standard of living on what they are paid if they even have one child. The sin of systemic racism has resulted in a disproportionate number of the lowest paid workers in essential public sector employment being people of color and women. We stand in solidarity with those that desire to work collaboratively and collectively to help us all to dismantle oppressive economic practices. It's been more than a three-year journey since we took up this issue of collective bargaining in our city. It's past time to do what is right for the workers of Virginia Beach by passing this collective bargaining ordinance. Dr. King's famous quote still resonates in our hearts. The time is always right to do what is right. We know that we can count on you as entrusted leaders for the economic and common good of Virginia Beach to keep your promise to do what is right and support collective bargaining. Thank you. The next speaker, the next speaker is Scott Miller. Scott Miller, Brad Martin, Steve Cover. And after Mr. Cover is Jim Severa. Scott Miller representing Visions. Good evening. I'm Steve Cover, a lifelong resident of Virginia Beach. I had a wonderful career working for this great city for over 40 years. I retired in January of 2021 after serving 36 years in the fire department, the last nine as the fire chief and another four years after that as the Deputy City Manager of Public Safety. Our city has some of the best trained and equipped employees in the world, working in many departments providing a myriad of service to our citizens. It is not lost on me that the continued support of this city council over the years plays a huge role in the ability to provide world-class service to our community. As, have I, I, as I've said many times over my career, Training and equipment does not matter if we do not have a skilled, knowledgeable, and engaged workforce. Our employees make the difference. I understand that you have many important decisions to make, especially in the middle of the budget process. There are many competing interests and priorities that you must balance. I would submit to you that there is no better investment than to invest in our workforce, who deliver many valued services to our citizens 24 hours a day. From public safety to public works and utilities, parks and recreation and mental health services, over 30 departments keep our city operating 24 hours a day. There's an opportunity before you that will show our employees that they really do matter. Collective bargaining can give employees an opportunity to be more involved in decisions that shape their work environment. Management and labor collaborating on issues such as compensation, training, safety measures, and other working conditions 
will lead to shared values and a higher quality of service delivery. This results in value for our residents with a more engaged workforce who feel empowered and have higher job satisfaction. There will be opposition to you allowing the collective bargaining process to move forward. Issues such as cost and already allowing our workforce to have input will be laid out. Opposition may say that the process will adversely impact management. I would submit to you that agreed upon boundaries and goals will lead to a streamlined management process with less friction between management and labor, less grievances and increased productivity. I believe that the police chiefs, the fire chiefs, and other department directors must have the ability to run their departments and have the discretion to make work and personnel related decisions. The city council and the city manager must be able to make budget decisions, balancing the needs of our city. I also believe that management can use the collective knowledge of the operating core workforce to their advantage. Our frontline employees are a force multiplier that can assist management with some decisions. As we move forward in attempting to Thank attract world-class talent to the Thank workforce, you. collective bargaining Thank can you. assist in recruiting the right people. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Jim Cervera. After Mr. Cervera is Ashley Cooper. Members of council, good evening. I want you to know Steve Culver and I did not discuss what we were going to say prior to coming forward, but you're going to hear some of the same things that Steve spoke about. One thing that I wish to talk about when it comes to collective bargaining, if it's done the right way with management priorities, and I will talk about that in a minute, is that it gives the employee an intrinsic value to come to work. That is, I'm part of the system. I made some decisions to be part of this system. And you know, I'm very pro public safety, quite obviously, you know what I did my entire life. So to come to work every day and say, I have an intrinsic reason every day to do that stuff that we do is extremely important. But I wish to also say that if we are going to look at public safety, and I think we should, that we also need to look at the rest of the city workforce. You know, I, I joke, I, I turned on my water spigot today, water came out. Amazing, because it starts at Lake Gaston. I know these fine men and women who work public utilities and public works got it to my house, and it was clean. So let's look at the whole workforce. However, we do need to write into maybe code what management rights should be and how they should be taken when it comes time to sit down and have those discussions for collective bargaining. And the third piece to this, I know we're going to talk about cost, um, and Mr. Duhaney, if, if I'm quoting wrong on what the article said, with our, our proposed new park, beautiful park at, at the Loop, it will cost $1.1 million a year for upkeep. If that's correct, then $1.1 million to run collective bargaining goes right along with it because we're bringing our employees into the system as part of the system to say we are in this together. We understand exactly what needs to be done. We understand how we need to do it. And... I know there's a, a former fire chief on the council now, former fire chief just was here. We also know that management has to have certain particulars. So to sum up, number one, collective bargaining will be good for our city. It will be good for the employees to have that intrinsic value to come to work every day. Number two, I'm pro public safety, you know that, but let's look at the rest of our city workforce along with public safety. And number three, you're going to hear some dire things, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, about costs. I don't think it's going to break the bank considering where our budget is now and where it will be going in the future. Any questions from council? <laughs> Thank you. The next speaker is Ashley Cooper. After Ms. Cooper is Jimmy Frost. Hello, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and City Council. I know a few of you, but to introduce myself, my name is Ashley Rayner Cooper. I was born and raised in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and have operated a small business in Hilltop since 2011. I am here in favor of collective bargaining for city workers in Virginia Beach, and here to express my support for fire and EMS. In 2021, my mother's life was saved by fire and EMS in the middle of the night from a house fire that started in her bedroom. If it weren't for them responding quickly and rushing her to the hospital, she might not be here today. In your decision to vote on collective bargaining for city workers, consider what your life and what your family's life is worth to you. To me, it's priceless. 
I would not think twice about making our city workers a priority and supporting them as much as they help us. Please consider the safety of all taxpayers when voting. Thank you. The next speaker is Jimmy Frost. Jimmy Frost, Cody Connor. After Mr. Connor is Andy Ban. Good evening. Good evening, City Council. I'm here to urge you to vote in favor of collecting bargaining. Um, I mean, the arguments for and against are pretty clear. It's clear that it empowers workers, increases production, improves recruiting, retention, um, makes workers' lives better. And to be clear, we're talking about our city workers. We're talking about the people that keep our city running. Considering that, and it's illegal for them to strike, so the only real arguments against it is you don't think the people that do the job should have a say or the money, right? The money. I remember reading something about the estimates with $400,000 for new positions, at least another $500,000 in administrative other costs for the collective bargaining. Rounded up about a million dollars a year. It's a big number for somebody like me. But for the city, isn't our proposed budget $1,445,000,000 and some change? Isn't one million of that like 0.069% or something? Seems like it should be pretty easy to uh, make that number budget neutral. Not to mention, aren't we spending a million dollars on the Jackalope Festival? I mean, that's great. I'm a big fan of skateboard and I plan on going. I think it's gonna be fun. But if I remember correctly, didn't we lose money on that? Wasn't our ROI like 47 cents on the dollar? We can afford to do that, but we can't afford to give a, a seat at the table to the people that keep our streets clean, keep the clean water coming in, the bad water going out. We can do a skateboard festival for a weekend, but we can't uh, afford to put money on improving the lives of the people at the other end of the 911 call, to put the fire out, to save your lives, the people you depend on in your most dire moments, we can't afford to invest in them, but uh, I bet you'll expect them to be at the Jackalope Festival, keeping everything clean, keeping everybody safe. Vote for collective bargaining. It's the right thing to do for the people that take care of us. Thank you. The next. The next speaker is Andy Ban. Kat Porterfield, Ms. Porterfield, and after Ms. Porterfield is Noel Garrow. Good evening, esteemed council members and Mayor Dyer. <laughs> There's nothing funny about not being treated with fairness and dignity at work. And it's particularly unamusing when workers aren't even safe on the job. We are still recovering from the most horrific instance of this, something no community should have to endure and something that may never have happened if city workers had had more of a voice. Sorry if I'm rubbing salt in an unhealed wound, but part of healing this wound among city workers could be to give them that voice. That's just one of the things collective bargaining will do to show the people who take care of our city and of us that they are valued. Now I know the phrase collective bargaining might sound as exciting as watching paint dry, but fear not, I promise to sprinkle some humor in and hopefully enough logic to make you look like a menial poopy pants if you choose to vote against collective bargaining. Collective bargaining simply means that instead of every worker having to negotiate their own terms of employment, they come together as a collective force to negotiate with their employer. Much like you see the residents come before you as a collective force to get things done. Is that your hesitation here? A concern that if we take care of our city workers, they'll get things done? 
Police officers and firefighters sure get things done, right? They think about what happens when they can't. It's a tragic thought and one we all hope doesn't affect us or those we love. Through collective bargaining, police officers and firefighters can negotiate for safer working conditions, better equipment, and proper staffing levels. This ultimately enhances their ability to protect and serve all of us effectively. Did you know that these agreements could include provisions for disciplinary procedures and oversight mechanisms, promoting accountability and transparency for the Virginia Beach Police Department? That sounds like a win for the whole community. Something that could help restore the lost trust among some in our community. Collective bargaining will empower our workers to have a voice in decisions directly impacting their lives, like whether they can afford to rent or buy a home in the city they work in, or if they'll be sleeping in their car and taking showers at Planet Fitness. When employees feel valued and respected and can afford to live, they'll be motivated to give more, leading to increased productivity and happier workplaces. Who knows, maybe we'll foster better communication and build stronger relationships between workers and management. What I do know is that collective bargaining works and the people who take care of us all deserve it. The next speaker is Noel Garrow and then Mike Callen. Council members, city manager, mayor, thank you for having us here. My name is Noel Garrow. I'm currently the vice president of Virginia Beach Professional Fire EMS, Local 2924. I'm a 12-year employee of the City of Virginia Beach Fire Department, and I'm also a 26-year resident of the City of Virginia Beach. Collective bargaining will increase the safety of, not, for not only the public, but for the first responders who are tasked with providing service to the city. A 2021 academic study found that states with expanded collective bargaining rights for firefighters had few fire, fewer firefighter fatalities. Not only are there fewer firefighter fatalities, there are also fewer civilian fatalities as well. A Cornell, study, a Cornell University study of public sector collective bargaining found that cooperation results in improvements in both the delivery of public services and the quality of a work-life balance. Pair those two together, this means that collective bargaining can make the workplace safer for us and the community of which we serve. But let's be honest here. Collective bargaining just can't be summed up in a couple of quick, nice, cool facts, right? The reality of collective bargaining is it gives workers a real voice, a seat at the table, where decisions that affect our working conditions and ability to do our jobs are actually occurring. Simply stated, collective bargaining provides a framework for cooperation between workers in the city that promotes an, an improved safety, efficiencies, recruitment, and retention. So please, support cooperation, support safety, support em employee engagement, but most importantly, do this by supporting collective bargaining. Thank you very kindly for your time. The next speaker is Mike Callen. After Mr. Callen is Marie Dettino. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor Dyer, members of the City Council, thank you for an opportunity to share my thoughts. I have been on a fact-finding mission for a while, and one of the steps in the process that took place was to attend the collective bargaining community meeting on March 14th. That was hosted by Council Member Sabrina Wooten for the purpose of informing the public. And my purpose in showing up was to merely listen and learn. I have continued that process, and I'd like to share some of what I've learned along the way. I've discovered that there's a bill in Richmond, HB 1001, presented by a delegate by the name of Kathy Tran, and it seeks to repeal a couple of things that are currently in motion, or one that is in motion, I believe, and one that's proposed. The first is the repeal of the existing prohibition on collective bargaining by itself. But the second is somewhat interesting as well in the sense that it is a repeal on the right of an individual public employee to be able to register and offer a secret ballot on their decision making process. That would be repealed, which was surprising. Another surprise was the discovery that the General Assembly permitted only lo local and most state governments 
to implement the collective bargaining option. They do not intend to make this option available to General Assembly employees under the impression that it will impose significant costs that they did not want to deal with at their level. One of the things that I think really irritates the great majority of the public is to be aware of the fact that legislators introduce legislation that is implied and enforced on the community, and yet they exempt themselves from that same set of circumstances. It doesn't create the sense of community and collaboration that we're looking for. Another discovery was the fact that there are examples of these discussions leading in other localities that include the following. In Prince William County, teachers are demanding a 17% pay raise. In Richmond City, a new contract requires up to a 40% salary increase over the next three years. And one of the questions along the way is, due to these increased costs at a local level, the obvious question that it raises is, where's the money coming from? Likely, the result will be an increase in the property taxes that are assessed in order to raise the revenue in order to meet the bill that's due. That only adds to the inflationary component that surrounds our communities today. In conclusion. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. The next speaker is Marie Detino, and then Terry Green. Good evening. Good evening. I just wanted to say that my father, my father was a city fireman for 30 years. And I've seen him work two jobs besides being a fireman just to support his family. And the only reason that these people are looking for some kind of help or a friend is because they don't feel they have one in the government. I kind of feel that they should have a livable wage where they can do their job serving the city like they want to and take care of their family with one job, not three. When, when a father has to be gone from the house for the mother and the children that long, it's not right. And we lost a lot of time with my father that I wish we had back. If you could just think and imagine if they weren't here for your family, what would you do? Thank you. The next speaker is Terry Green. After Mr. Green is Amaza Cummings. Good evening. Good evening. How you doing, Councilman, <laughs> Mayor, Vice Mayor, Mr. Dehaney? How y'all doing? I'm coming to you as a city worker, 35 years, going on 36. And I want to talk to you about the eco. The eco comes with those who don't want collective bargaining and haven't dealt with the struggle. I have dealt with the struggle through this city for 30, going on 36 years. And I've seen a lot of change. And I know this is why we need collective bargaining. We got labor and trades, administration, professional, IT, police, and fire. There's a disparity in every last one of the departments. I'm not going to labor it. I'm not going to say anything about that. But I would like to say that in each department, It's not equal. It, it's, it's, if you look at the pay scales, the hiring, and their budget, it's not equal. Now, when you talk about discrepancies, hiring tactics, 
where you can hire a family member that comes in and make more money than a person with a degree than a person that doesn't just been hired, not having a degree. Those are the spurs of why we need collective bargaining. One example, we had a sick leave bank. I put 40 hours in there when I was 30 years old. They wiped away with it. Didn't tell us nothing. Oh, deal with it. I got a voice. I want to know where my leave went. That was my time. I put 40 hours in there. Nobody can tell me nothing. Maybe it's before my time up, somebody can tell me something. But this is the disparities that we are having. Management, some of them good, some of them not. It's not equal. But hopefully today, with collective bargaining, we can level the playing field and let's have a voice. Because city workers, since I've been working here, we never had a voice. Never. And it's not having to do with the taxes or anything. It's us come talking to you all. Even if it's yay or nay. It's all about what we can collaborate, come up with. It ain't got nothing to do with raising nobody's taxes because this is city money. It's tax people paying money, but where are our tax money going? Well, you can invest in your people before you invest into an investor that's supposed to already have money. And, and straighten your people out. Now. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. The next, next speaker is a, Mr. Cummings. <laughs> After Mr. Cummings is Alec, Eric Ellerby. I'm Isaiah. I appreciate you. Thank you. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brother and sisters to dwell together in union. Now, when I speak on, on that, I speak on the family. I speak, you know, I got a, 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 a speech prepared, but you know what? Prayed on it. I'm like a preacher sometimes, but I'm not a preacher, because three minutes ain't gonna, ain't gonna last enough time for a preacher to start Maybe. talking. But as a family, we gotta be able to take care of one another. I retired as a soldier, 28 years. And one sergeant major told me, he said, Master Sergeant Carmen, you better make sure you take care of your soldiers. Because if you don't take care of your soldiers, your soldiers ain't going to take care of you. I used to wear a brown round. Some of you might know what a brown round is. You know what a brown round is? See the man? Yes, sir. That's a drill sword. <laughs> you know what a brown round is. That's a drill sword. A drill sword, not a drill and stuck. That's two different things. Marine Corps. Now. Let me get back on point here. Because <laughs> I only got three minutes and I ain't a preacher. Leadership. Some of us in leadership positions, but don't know how to lead. You got to lead by example. You got to take care of your soldiers. I mean, some soldiers, we got to take care of your people. Who are the people? The employee. Thank you, fire department. Thank you. Thank you, police department. Because the job that I do, I'm a water service inspector. And I deal with delinquent accounts. And I have the fortunate and unfortunate job to put a tag on your door and cut your water off because you ain't paid your bill. I need that guy to protect me because everybody's going to come after me all kinds of ways. But I'm going to got a smile on my face because I'm an ambassador of the city. I'm going to keep smiling, tell you what you do to get your water turned back on. That's my job. It could be stressful, but the person that I am, the job that I do, I do it for you, the citizen. Somebody gotta do it, might as well be me. Communication, we gotta be better communicators with one another. The lady spoke to her building too, where she at? Where you at, lady? Where you at? Where you at? She still here? Spoke on building two. That used to be my home. Lost some friends that day. We gotta do better. We gotta do better. We gotta do better. Toxic work environment. Boy, I wasn't in NBC when I was in uh, uh, nuclear, biological, and chemical. Some of you might not know that. Toxic work environment. 
You gotta know how to smile. Because if I smile and give you a good word, I don't even gotta know you. You can give it Thank back. Thank you very me. much, sir. Appreciate it. The next speaker is Eric Ellerby. After Mr. Ellerby will be Teresa Savage. Good evening, good evening. My name is Eric Ellerby. I'm one of the city employees. I've been working for the city for 10 or 11 years now. I'm gonna keep it short, straight to the point. Retention. I heard, I heard the same story for years. Guys come in, two or three years, probably shorter. You think you, you befriend them, think they're gonna stay there. As soon as you turn around, they're going out the door. Why? Because they say that the city of Virginia Beach, I'm not gonna, you can fill in the blank, ain't smack. Just gonna keep it real, just like that. And what it is, because they saying that they're not getting paid enough. And I heard someone say that you spend more time with your family, you spend less time with your family than you do with your coworkers. That is true. Because out of 11 years, I'm pretty sure I spent a lot of time with my coworkers than I spent with my family. And a lot of them leave, they, they get their CDLs and they go somewhere else that's paying more. I've seen that it's always the same conversation every time, every day, and still to this day, the same conversation. Uh, if, we, if we go with collective bargaining, I believe the city will save hundreds or thousands of dollars or more per year in turnovers caused with collective bargaining. And as I said, I'm gonna keep it short and brief. Let me leave you with this. When you turn your water, when you drive down the road, when you flush the toilet, when you call 911, when you call the fire department, who come out? We the city. There's a movie that I remember back in the day, it's Ghostbusters. Who do y'all call? The city workers. God bless y'all. The next speaker is, the next speaker is Teresa Savage. Chris Hollis. And after Mr. Hollis is Dante Strabino. Hello, Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Council, constituents. Yes, uh, I, my name is Chris Hollis. I've been a federal employee for over 15 years, the federal government. And I was a steward, a union, the whole time. We never went on strike. You know, we never had layoffs. You know, every time the big government said we're going to furlough, they worked it out to where we all were still gainfully employed. I want to take the opportunity to reflect on people in the audience. Uh, can every city worker stand up, please? If you can, if you're able. I want y'all to look at these individuals right here. As everyone has just echoed, they keep your city running. They respond to your emergencies every day. You know, they put fires out. They're saving lives at home. These workers, when you turn on your water, you turn on your light switch, you know, when you're going down the street, you're not hitting a pothole. These are the people that you need to be thanking. They need dignity with their labor. What is labor without dignity? It's giving them the respect and the honor that they deserve because they're gonna to continue to keep your precious city operating every day. And I'm blessed to be able to know almost each and every one of them and to work aside them to get things done. And it's your job. And this is the moment that y'all are standing in to where you're gonna reflect one day on what did you do in this moment? What changes were made? Because time changes everything, and we know that. So it's either gonna make the decisions for your constituents to honor them and to give them what they deserve or kick the can down the road. But I think each and every one of you are in a position to be able to make sound decisions and to love and respect one another, especially your constituents out here that bust their tails every day, wake up faithfully every morning to get their job done. Nobody has to tell them to do their job. But when you're flushing that toilet, you turn on that water, you can call 911, you got somebody responding, they're doing their job. So let's do your job, our job together, you know, and pass collective bargaining. They deserve it. Thank you. The next speaker is Dante Strabino. Dante Strabino. Jessica Casper. After Ms. Casper is Vernon Hawk. <laughs> Ms.
My name is Jessica Casper. I'm a born and raised resident of Virginia Beach, a voter and a city employee with libraries. I am here today to stand up and speak out in support of collective bargaining. I come from a family of New York firefighters and EMS, and I have seen the positive impact that collective bargaining has on employees, organizations, and the communities they serve. Collective bargaining is an opportunity for Virginia Beach. For employees, collective bargaining is an opportunity to self-organize. It is a chance to use our own voices to work collaboratively with city leadership and improve processes and policies because we are best positioned to see the gaps in city services. We have the pulse of the community day to day, not just through surveys and not just through town hall meetings. Collective bargaining also means a direct line to address health and safety concerns and improve working conditions throughout city departments, building an environment where work can be accomplished effectively and securely. For employers, for you all, collective bargaining is an opportunity to have employees who are more eff effective at their jobs because they feel confident that they have the tools they need to succeed and that work isn't just another thing to worry about in their lives. It means better, more honest communication because your employees have the support they need to actively address concerns when they otherwise would have remained silent and unhappy. It means employees who stay in their roles or even progress within the organization, growing leaders and retaining the experience, history, and institutional knowledges that keeps our city functioning. Over the years, over the years Virginia Beach has made nominal efforts to empower their employees but those opportunities have always held an imbalance of power. Meet and confer is no different. It, like all of our other options available to city employees, will still be controlled by management and does not create an environment for open, productive dialogue. Because at the end of the day, that dynamic feels like it means putting your job on the line to make your voice heard. Virginia Beach can do better, and this is an opportunity to do better. Show your employees that you truly value them, Show the community that you will do what it takes to improve this city, and please vote yes to collective bargaining. Thank you. The next speaker is Vernon Hawk. After Mr. Hawk is Mike Bisk. Mr. Hawk, Vernon Hawk, Mike Bisk, and then after Mr. Bisk is Ellen Joffe Gill. Welcome. Hello. My name is Mike Bisk, and I was born and raised here. I am a tax-paying, working autistic person with CPTSD. I work in the private sector under a collectively bargained union contract. This contract protects me from being discriminated against because the government and law has failed to do so with lack of pro-worker legislation. And I support the right for city workers to collectively bargain. Just because a worker is a public employee doesn't change the fact that they produce essential labor for an employer. Firstly, allow me to ask a rhetorical question to address the assumption that labor unions are trying to control the city budget. Why would any collective of people be allowed to control the city budget? I'm assuming that there's someone, <coughs> someone who makes the final decisions on budget affairs, so I must ask, and I'm, I'm sure many in here are wondering as well, how, how exactly would a labor union be allowed to control the city budget, aren't those decisions the government officials make? The fact of the matter is that it seems to me as if collective bargaining already exists in the Virginia Beach government, it's just that workers aren't welcome. With that said, without, without a negotiated labor contract and a platform protecting my employment for the past two years, I'd be unemployed and regarded by institutions as insubordinate or unprofessional, just because I experience symptoms usually exacerbated by employers. And the underlying reasoning for this perception is the false assumption that my mental health conditions are instances of voluntary incompetence. I'm not being incompetent when I'm experiencing understaffed, underpaid, and undersupported work environments. The reality of my life and 
the lives of many others is that we are constantly trying our best at work, but it can be perceived as incompetence because it doesn't satisfy corporate and neurotypical expectations. As a taxpaying, working neurodivergent citizen of Virginia Beach, Virginia, the United States, and of the world, I believe all workers deserve to collectively bargain because the alternative is to be collectively compliant with current conditions. Thank you. Vote yes, please. The next speaker is Alan Joffe Gill, and then Conrad Shizventer. Good, e good evening. Thank you. Uh, good evening to the council, to Mayor Dwyer. My name is Rabbi Ellen Jaffe Gill. I am a rabbi here in Virginia Beach, but tonight I speak to you as a former union worker and as the granddaughter and great-granddaughter of union members. Um, many people who have gone bef who have spoken before me have pointed out that uh, uh, many of the good points about collective bargaining that it will save money on turnover, uh, that um, it will provide for better enforcement of safety rules, it, um, that meet and confer is just not the same thing. It does not provide the the equality of power that um, that collective bargaining does. I also know that the the feeling of the uh, of the populace here in Virginia Beach is in favor of collective bargaining. The last statistic I read was that more than 60% of Virginia Beach residents want this city to have collective bargaining. Unions are not after money. They they're not even after power, but they're definitely not after money. Nobody becomes a police officer, a firefighter, a worker for water, um, for a, an EMT to get rich. Nobody does that. Collective bargaining means that people have want a say in their work lives. They want to know that their efforts are not governed by the whim of employers, but by a structure that is recognized both by labor and by management. They want this structure in their work lives. Many Virginia Beach residents are descended from people who joined and even founded unions. I encourage you all to vote yes on collective bargaining for Virginia Beach. Thank you. The next speaker is Conrad Schisventer. After Mr. Schisventer is Alfred Wallace. Good evening. There is a prominent local politician who likes to say Virginia Beach's greatest resource is its people. I think that's true. Though now we got to see that belief tested. And we'll see if that politician wants to give the people more resources to prosper. After all, over 5,000 workers in Virginia Beach are teachers and school staff. Those people serve 66,000 students. Now, that is a precious resource. Do you, council members, want to make a more perfect effort at support for our student resource? I know that same politician who says that our best resources are people also says, Virginia Beach isn't perfect, but we always strive for perfection. Well, in that aim, council, making the education of our precious student resource more perfect requires attracting and retaining the best talent in the role of educators. Districts with the ability for the educators to collectively bargain retain the highest quality teachers and that boast um, and boost educational outcomes. Collective bargaining improves working conditionings and raises pay, gets a more diverse staff and with better student test scores as a result. This means, council members, when you seek out the support of the Virginia Beach Education Community come endorsement time, that you need to show your work and prove you had their back at a collective bargaining vote. And in no way is it just about educators. Hundreds of people work alongside me in Virginia Beach Parks and Rec. We want the ability to be offered a stronger voice for our working conditions and pay. 
We are a precious resource, the people of Virginia Beach Parks, budget employees too, convention center workers, housing, libraries, of course, fire and cops, everyone in between. We're a needed resource. I've heard council politicians um, laud and raise up our fire and police forces through the years. They listen to their calls for improvements, especially on pay scales, but taking pictures at firehouses and saying you back the blue is gonna sound hollow if you vote against the power for them to freely associate and speak for themselves. See if they give you that needed endorsement after you say no to collective bargaining, it might not happen. Saying we the people are our most valuable resource is one thing, but if you truly support the people, you have to empower them to collectively bargain. Next speaker is Al Wallace. After Mr. Wallace is Lisa Turner. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Dwyer and members of uh, council and city manager. I'm Al Wallace and I live in the uh, Bayside uh, uh, District. Uh, my concerns on collective bargaining are the demand for the right to strike is endless, as well as the demand for the city to bargain in good faith. It's just an uh, endless battle. Uh, there's no uh, insight, and uh, this can become a political warfare uh, with no winners. I just feel that uh, the city does take care of its workers, and that's under your purview to look after the workers of uh, Virginia Beach, and I think you're doing an outstanding job. Uh, the unions can be dis uh, disruptive and guaranteed increases in taxes. I'm sure you know of the Ford Motor Plant in Norfolk that was closed due to union activities. Workers suffered, including my next door neighbor. Uh, I pray the city does not enact uh, collective bargaining for I believe the city has been and will continue to provide the best uh, payment services to the workers. Thank you for your time. The next speaker is Lisa Turner. After Ms. Turner is Laura Hughes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, members of council, mayor, city manager. My name is Lisa Turner, and I'm a resident of city council district nine, district nine. And, and I was a member of the task force that you all convened. So thank you for that appointment. For those of you who didn't know, I was on that. Um, from a personal perspective, I was once a card-carrying member of T Teamsters Local 822. I worked my way through college at, uh, at UPS. I was a shop steward, and I enjoyed that time. I learned a lot about union representation, as well as what it meant to make sure you were there for the employees in a hardworking um, work environment. I know from my many years in the workforce that collective bargaining contributes to a safer and more equitable workplace. As a taxpayer, it matters to me that our city workers are valued. I do not like the way we pay some of our lowest starting salaries to firefighters, teachers, utility workers, police in the Hampton Roads area. The very people keeping our property values high in the cost of living in check. I want our city employees to know that they have the resources they need to address their working conditions, and importantly, they can earn the wages and benefits necessary to afford living in Virginia Beach. It also matters to me that young people stay here in our community. Gen Z and millennials are the fastest growing and most diverse segment of our population. That cohort will be larger than baby boomers voting this November. That cohort will be the largest <laughs> voting cohort this November. And they as a generation support unions and worker rights. I ask you to be advocates for the people who live here, who want our city to grow and thrive like the other communities that have passed collective bargaining in Virginia. Prince William, Alexandria, Charlottesville, Arlington, and even Portsmouth. 
We must show our residents and workers we believe in them and will support them as we move Virginia Beach forward. We can do better and we must. Thank you. The next speaker is Alvin Long. Alvin Long. And after Mr. Long is Bob Pizzini. Good evening. I'm speaking tonight as a representative of the Tidewater chapter of the Southern Workers' Assembly. Southern Workers' Assembly for the past decade and more has been organizing workers across the South, uh, both to join unions and also organizing workers who are not able to get a union in their workplace to still figure out ways to uh, to fight for their rights. And, and in particular, we stress uh, overcoming the legacy of, of racial discrimination and other forms of discrimination that have kept workers separated across the South. And that's one reason why we support collective bargaining wholeheartedly. And we're organizing in uh, virtually every state in the South at the present, but with, with our organization, many of the founders and the prominent leaders were city workers and other government workers in North Carolina who took that initiative primarily because they were the most, among the most downtrodden, you know, overexploited workers in the South. And they recognized that the, the anti-union sentiments in the South, the, the laws against collective bargaining that have existed so long were part and parcel of the Jim Crow laws and the discrimination laws. They were put into effect by the same politicians at the same time as all those laws for the same purpose of keeping people divided and, and powerless in the South. And I want to say that I personally have an interest in, in, in collective bargaining here because a couple of decades ago I worked right here as a as a contractor for the city with the IT department here. I, I took the help calls at the help desk down in the basement of building two. And I also traveled around to all the offices, you know, all the different areas of the city departments here from the, the libraries to the, the fire departments and the the uh, the, the recreation centers and all the various offices and everywhere I went. I heard the same kind of horror stories from the people working for the city about, about racial discrimination, about favoritism, uh, about uh, you know not not being able to 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 get paid enough to to support their families. But the one thing that ran through all those conversations was the the utter frustration and not feeling that anybody had any way to address those problems with the city because the, the HR department was seen as a, just an arm of, of management. Uh, there was no, no uh, alternative for people to, to, to address those issues except just to quit work and go find you know, a better job you know, doing the same thing for more pay in the private sector. So this is why we support collective thank, bargaining thank so you wholeheartedly. Much, thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Bob Pizzini. After Mr. Pizzini is Bruce Cameron. Hey, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I believe I've met everybody on council. Uh, for, for everybody, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting. My name is Bob Pizzini. I own and operate iFly Virginia Beach down at the oceanfront, indoor skydiving. Uh, prior to that, I served in the US Navy for 26 years, US Navy Special Operations. And uh, during my military career, uh, I was a bomb tech, and I worked with municipal police departments and municipal fire departments. And by the way, um, you all in the yellow shirts have responded to my building down at the oceanfront probably eight or 10 times over the last 10 years. Thank you very much. First class every single time. Not a single thing I can complain about in uh, the way they, they handle their duties and responsibilities. But what I'm concerned about is leadership. I now own a private sector business with 40 employees. I understand what uh, leadership requirements are in the military, and I would say that they're very similar in police, fire, and EMS. It is a directive type of leadership when you're on the scene, so to speak, or when you're responding. And it's an environment where lives are on the line, and everybody knows that when they take the job. 
leadership is critical in this environment. It's more, bless you, it's more critical in this environment uh, than I would say in most others. Leadership, if we're at the point of negotiating collective bargaining, it tells me that there's been a failure in leadership thus far. And is collective bargaining going to address that failure in leadership? Or is this another layer of bureaucracy that disarms leaders who have responsibility and accountability? It's been my experience throughout my entire adult life that very good leaders produce high performing teams. I certainly want my fire department to be high performing. I want my water department and my sanitation workers to be high performing, which they are. That is a function of leadership. Do we have to have collective bargaining to develop proper leadership within the city of Virginia Beach? I'll make one observation. When the gentleman asked for all the city employees to stand up, I was surprised that all members of council didn't stand up because we're all one team and uh, we, all, we all have a chain of command. We all have leadership. Great leaders develop great teams. Great teams are comprised of great teammates. And great teammates go on to become great leaders. Will collective bargaining solve what I perceive as a deficit in leadership at various levels? And, and, and if that's not being addressed specifically, then I would hope that that is given due consideration. We have a no strike clause, which is, or apparently there's a no strike clause, which is critical. Uh, is there a third alternative? Is there something else we can look at that will certainly improve the lives of our city workers and especially our first responders? Thank you, Bob. Appreciate Thank you. It. Next speaker is Bruce Cameron. After Mr. Cameron is Brian Luciano. Mayor Dwyer, city council members, my name is Bruce Cameron. I'm the Reed Larson Professor of Labor Law at Regent University School of Law, and I'm closing in on 50 years of nationwide litigation arising out of collective bargaining. Now, I'm not speaking on behalf of Regent tonight, but I have been asked by the National Right to Work Committee to speak, and they have an office in this area, in Virginia Beach. There are three reasons why I think collective bargaining is a bad idea for Virginia Beach. The first one is that collective bargaining is deeply unpopular with the general population. The most recent statistics from the Department of Labor indicate that 94% of employees in the private sector nationwide are not involved in collective bargaining. Only six are. The second reason why I believe that collective bargaining is a bad idea is that it's a bad idea for taxpayers. Most schools, municipalities, any organization that has uh, a service as its goal generally has about 70% of its expenses connected with labor costs. What that means is that 70% of the taxpayer burden in uh, Virginia Beach will be determined by closed door collective bargaining between the union and representatives of the Virginia Beach. Now obviously you have the final say on what the contract will require, but I think it's very impractical to think that you're going to unwind all the hours that were spent in collective bargaining. You're not going to understand the compromises that, that were made. And so what is done without the taxpayers having any direct input will be what determines the amount of taxpayer funding for uh, the, the city of Virginia Beach. Last, uh, if you look at the idea of exclusive representation, what it means is it is the union and the union alone which gets to speak on behalf of employees with the city of Virginia Beach. That bars all other employees from being able to speak with their employer about their terms and conditions of employment. If you are an employee who does not believe in being a member of a labor union, if you do not believe in the union politics, that means you are totally barred from having a voice or a vote in your workplace conditions. And so for those three reasons, the collective bargaining nationwide in the private sector is deeply unpopular, 
Number two, it turns over 70% of the budget of the city to backdoor collective bargaining. And number three, Thank you very that it bars Appreciate members. It. Thank, Thank you. you. And the next speaker is Brian Luciano. After Mr. Luciano is Melissa Lucason. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, Mr. Jahaney. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak with you today, and thank you for getting us to this point in the discussion. Um, I represent nearly 525 police officers, detectives, and forensics professionals who work for the VBPD. The PBA represents non-supervisory staff. This means that we represent approximately 88% of the employees who are eligible to join the PBA. It is important to note that each of these members has chosen to become and remain a member of their own free will, not because of some sort of requirement. It is also important to note that with the adoption of collective bargaining, their choice to join or not to join will remain. No one can be forced or required to join any association upon the adoption of collective bargaining. I also want to reiterate as we've heard several times, that strikes by public safety and all city employees are illegal and that those employees who engage in such a tactic will forfeit their employment. So many of the boogeymen that we all hear about for unions do not exist. Um, over the last several years, we have had countless conversations on collective bargaining. We have had a task force, we've had town halls, and there have been several HR presentations to this council. Tonight, I have uh, tonight you have and we'll continue to hear more on stats and numbers about what collective bargaining means. I want to say something different. Many of you know my personal politics. I think it's correct to say that they don't usually align with the side of the aisle which traditionally is the biggest supporter of collective bargaining. I know that this issue is strongly partisan. It should not be a partisan issue. Giving police officers and workers a stronger voice with their employer equates to support, real support, not the type of support that gets slapped on a bumper sticker in the hopes of getting out of, of a speeding ticket when you get pulled over by a police officer. <laughs> Am I wrong? Um, this issue should reach ac across the aisle. I come to you tonight and ask that you put party politics aside, show support for law enforcement, the real support for law enforcement that each of you claim to have and pass collective bargaining so we can sit down together and get to the very important work of bettering the lives and careers of not only our officers, but all of our city employees. And I'll leave you with this, th this last thought and the theme. Um, Ronald Reagan was president of his union for seven terms. So thank you. The next speaker. Is Melissa Lucason. After Ms. Lucason is Kenny Golden. Good evening, Council. Well, I'm not going to say anything that hasn't already been said tonight, so I won't be long. I'm here tonight as a resident and business owner in Virginia Beach for 14 years. Our small business with over 20 employees manages to pay our staff a minimum of $17 an hour and 100% of their health insurance premiums which sadly is more than you pay some of your employees. Um, I fully support collective bargaining in this city. It's imperative that we recognize the invaluable contributions of our dedicated public servants and ensure that they have a voice in their workplace. Collective bargaining empowers workers to negotiate fair wages, benefits, and working conditions. It's about equity, respect, and dignity for those who tirelessly serve our communities day in and day out. By allowing workers to bargain collectively, we affirm our commitment to a thriving city. Furthermore, collective bargaining fosters collaboration and strengthens relationships between workers and management. By engaging in open dialogue and negotiation, we can find solutions that benefit both employees and the city as a whole. It's a win-win scenario that leads to increased productivity, efficiency, and morale. It ensures that the voices of our city's diverse workforce are heard and respected. It's about standing up for the rights of our firefighters, police officers, sanitation workers, teachers, and countless others who dedicate their lives to making our city a better place for us to live in. It's not just about negotiating contracts either. It's about recognizing the, recognizing the inherent worth and dignity of every individual who serves our community. I've been watching this process for over two years. 
If not for the hard work of our firefighters advocating for themselves, I'm not sure you would have gotten this far for just our public works employees. Here we are at the finish line and you just have to say yes. But if you say no, I'm really looking forward to this year's elections. Firefighters might ignite a firestorm that gets voters out to the polls. Our voice is our vote. Thank you. The next speaker is Penny Golden. After Mr. Golden is John Murdo. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wilson, and members of City Council, friends all. I, uh, my name is Kenny Golden. I live in the King's Grant section on Little Neck. Francie and I have been here off and on since 1995. Um, I served 31 years in the military as a, as, a fi as a pilot, and we flew some pretty doggone tough missions. And we even did rescues. And we even had some of our firefighters in different places that we put in the airplane. So I know the hard work that our firefighters and our police officers do. As a matter of fact, as a member of the VFW, uh, we go around every month to every precinct and take just little items for them to have in their ready rooms so that they can do a better job and they can run out real quick and grab a snack that we put in there for them. So I appreciate what they do and I believe their pay should be the very best in the state of Virginia. And I am a native of Virginia. But I saw what collective bargaining did in Prince William. And I also saw what it did in San Diego. And it puts a barrier between you and these folks out here. A barrier that you're not gonna penetrate it's another layer of bureaucracy. And the rabbi talked about it's not about power and money. It's exactly about power and money. It's not about all the other things that we've talked about because we have ways to take care of those. I'll be the first one when you tell me you need a pay raise to come up here and stand in front of you and ask for that pay raise. So I ask you tonight, do not vote for collective bargaining. Thank you. The next speaker is John Murdoch. And then Andy Ban. Welcome. How's it going? I'm here today to speak about collective bargaining. I'm a college student from Virginia Western University. I'm a senior. I'll be graduating in May. But more importantly than that, I want to spend a life that helps as many people as possible. Collective bargaining does that because for the first and foremost reason of it increases trust in the city. If you work for Virginia Beach, if you serve Virginia Beach, you should be able to afford to live in Virginia Beach. Our workers serve the city, but as with everyone here, we serve our families first. And we need to make sure that our people, our workers are being well taken care of and collective bargaining allows them to, if they have issues, that they might not have the time or the energy to do it alone and go in front of city council to do that, they have someone who can represent them to bring these issues to city council and work out an amicable solution that works for both parties. And this helps because it ensures the welfare of our government workers in Virginia Beach. Because when we talk about the cost of collective bargaining and we look at the millions of dollars spent, I don't see that as an additional cost. I see uh, underfunding that this will make whole through extra spending. When we need to maybe pay our workers more or need to add extra benefits to our workers to make sure them and their families are covered, collective bargaining can allow us and enable us to achieve that so people who work for Virginia Beach can be proud of Virginia Beach. We can ensure fairness for those who work in the city to make sure their lives are being well taken care of and more importantly, that their families have a line to stay here for as long as they need to. And lastly, I just want to address the biggest concern when it comes to collective bargaining, strikes. I know it was previously mentioned that it's we have no strike clause, but when push comes to shove, that might not end up mattering when it comes to collective bargaining. And I don't think that's a reasonable fear to have. When it comes to strikes, that's an absolute last resort. If you work for our government, 
you want to see our government being well taken care of. You don't want to neglect it. And as a result of it, as long as both sides are negotiating in good faith with each other, which involves trust in the city council, as well as trust in the members who want to unionize and collectively bargain with city council, as long as you're trusting each other and you're acting in good faith, I don't see a problem here. Virginia Beach, simply put, is the largest city in the Commonwealth, just by pure population. When we can enact collective bargaining for Virginia Beach, we can make sure that we continue the work to make sure that Virginia Beach is the best city in the Commonwealth. Thank you. The next speaker is Andy Ban. Mr. Ban. And then Jimmy Frost. Hey, good evening. Good evening, Andy Bunn. Grateful for y'all. I may disagree, but I'm not, not grateful. Thank you very much for your service to us as citizens. What problem were we trying to solve here? You know, we heard earlier, um, if you don't take care of your people, they won't take care of you. And that's exactly right. And so when you put a job offer in front of someone, they just, they can decide for themselves whether or not they're being taken care of. They don't need somebody else to help them. I believe that. By its nature, the service of government is a monopoly. The part, issue two. So if there's a monopoly and there's a strike, that's just not fair because there's no alternative. So that's not right. And the third point is, I appreciate all the yellow shirts that are here. My point, before I got here, and you can read it here, the collect the concentrated interest versus the diffused interest. Where are all of the moms and dads who are worried about education and that are worried about all the other things that they have to worry about in their lives? They're not here. That's the diffused interest. What we have here tonight demonstrated is the concentrated interest. And those are not necessarily aligned. And that's why we employ you to be able to be the reasonable people, to be able to say, okay, we have this many resources and we have this many issues, we have to resolve them all. And you have to answer to all the people that are in the diffused interest. When they come, they're gonna vote for people who are gonna represent the concentrated interest. I mean, we heard it tonight. They just threatened you all with, well, we're gonna come after you at the election. Well, that's what happens to all the people that have other things to worry about, and they just need to worry about their lives and have you help them prioritize things. And that's why there shouldn't be collective bargaining, because there shouldn't be this, this clash of the diffused interest and the concentrated interest. It should just be, you guys see what's needed, here's the job offer, you're smart enough to decide whether you're being taken care of, and hopefully I'm all in favor of it being enough that we recruit the best. And so far we've been doing that. You guys have been great at that. So we don't need to say yes to the concentrated interest because of all the people who are not here, the diffused interest. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Jimmy Frost. After Mr. Frost is Kurt Dietrich. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I'm here to speak on behalf of the Republican Party of Virginia Beach to express our opposition to collective bargaining. Back in the early parts of the 20th century, the post-industrial revolution brought with it negligence, abuse, and unsafe working conditions, causing misery that was the lot of the American worker's life. The industrialists and robber barons of those days had unimaginable power without account with accountability to virtually no one. Power is something not given up without a fight, and those were some bloody fights indeed. Unions at that time brought about changes that were needed. Thankfully, times have changed. I saw a sign on Pacific Avenue the other day that said something to the effect we'd be safer with collective bargaining. Does this somehow mean that we're not safe now? Of course not. Does this mean that we don't already have the best trained, best equipped, and best paid first responders in all of Hampton Roads? Ask yourself this, when that F-18 fell out of the sky on Good Friday several years ago, was there any fire department in the state that could have done a better job? 
When that madman attacked Building 2, could any police department in the country show more courage than ours did on that horrible day? Is there any other public school system in Hampton Roads Virginia Beach parents would rather send their children to for an education? I'll wager the answers to those questions are no, no, and no. And Chief Hutch, with respect, I'd ask you directly, if you feel the Virginia Beach Fire Department treats its employees unfairly and they need a collective bargaining, why on earth would you stay until retirement? Well, why would anyone? One should also keep in mind that unions, whomever they represent, are, at the end of the day, a business. For them to succeed, they must ferment distrust, division, and an us-versus-them mentality. Oh, and don't forget about the union dues that collective bargaining people will be paying themselves, such as NEA President Jessica Pringle makes $449,000 a year. American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten topped them all at $487,000 a year. Mr. City Manager, I think that's more than you make. One would also have a difficult time explaining to the taxpayers how supporting organizations like these national unions would be in the best interest of the taxpayers, but please feel free to try. As a longtime political operative, I can assure our local chapter presidents that should this measure pass, they would also cede their freedom to back candidates that their members support and be told by union bosses who you will support. That's just how unions work. So be very careful what you wish for. These are just some of the things the Republican Party of Virginia Beach feel would put our citizens, local government, and municipal workforce at odds. Whatever our ideological differences might be, we believe that as a city, we do pretty well by our municipal employees, and we do not need the added stripe and expense that collective bargaining would bring. On behalf of the membership of the Republican Party of Virginia Beach, I ask the City Council protect the taxpayers and the relationship with our municipal employees by voting to decline collective bargaining. I thank you. The next speaker is Kurt Dietrich. After Mr. Dietrich is Kathleen Slendy. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of council. My name is Kurt Dietrich. I'm a resident of Virginia Beach. And I'm here tonight in strong support of collective bargaining for our city workers, allowing employees who seek union representation to negotiate their wages, terms, and conditions of employment is a longstanding practice in cities and counties, big and small, across the country. And it's important to remember that our city workers are the ones who are actually doing the job every day, and they are the subject matter experts. By having a process in place like collective bargaining, it allows them a real way to address the issues and concerns and negotiate their employment benefits. Over the last few days since this public hearing was announced, there's been a lot of comments on Facebook, and even tonight, um, some information needs to be cleared up. Number one is right to work. Allowing employees to seek union representation has nothing to do with an individual's right to work. It does not mandate or force employees to join a union or pay union dues if they do not want to. Collective bargaining and right to work can coexist. But if a majority of employees in a unit, which it looks like we have here, wish to have union representation through a democratically elected process, they should be allowed to. Number two is strikes. It's in the state code already that any public employee who participates in a strike, sick out, work stoppage, work slowdown, forfeits their employment with their locality for a 12-month period. By passing and allowing your employees to collectively bargain, that does not change anything in the state strike code. And lastly is taxes. The state law is also very clear about taxes. All budgetary items rest with city council. It costs zero dollars to allow employee unions and city management to sit down at a table and negotiate the terms and conditions, here's the key word, in good faith. Employee unions cannot force cities to create money that's not already there by way of taxes. So I would ask all members of city council to stand with your city workers and support collective bargaining. Thank you. The next speaker is Kathleen, Kathleen Slendy and then Max Ganano. Good evening, my name is Kathleen Slindy. I am the elected president of the Virginia Beach Education Association. I am not a union boss. I was elected by my colleagues, duly elected, and I serve them. I am also a teacher and have been a resident and a voter in Virginia Beach for 27 years. I wanna address some of the myths about collective bargaining. Number one, the right to work state. There can be no unions or collective bargaining. Actually, the United States Supreme Court's Janus decision in 2018 made all states right to work, which means individuals cannot be forced to join a union or pay union dues. So Florida, Texas, Mississippi, 
all right-to-work states with various forms of collective bargaining for their public employees. Florida even preserves this right in their state constitution. For me as an educator, collective bargaining is a standard labor practice. 45 states currently negotiate with educators. Myth number two, specifically monopoly gar um, government bargaining, says it takes away employees' voice and that they must use the union to talk or negotiate with employers. Under this ordinance, employees can submit grievances without approval from the union. As for being able to negotiate their pay or working conditions, other than department heads, no individual city employee has that ability. It is absurd to suggest that they have a voice right now. With collective bargaining, they will actually get to vote on agreements made between the union and the city. Myth number three, it's costly to administer. <clears throat> city staff estimated a cost of $899,000 mostly to hire four additional full-time employees. Mr. Dohaney has stated that the city could use existing employee va vacancies instead of creating new positions, reducing that price significantly. The other large cost cited was for a new payroll system, which is needed with or without collective bargaining and is already funded. Mr. Dehaney has indicated that adjustment, adjustments could be made to that system. They could be front loaded and would not be a big deal. Myth four, meet and confer can accomplish the same thing. Under meet and confer, the employer can unilaterally change or nullify what has been agreed upon so employees have no reasonable assurance that negotiated agreements will be upheld. Myth five, collective bargaining cuts taxpayers out of the process, forces tax increases. Not true. City builds the ordinance. It's a common practice to require a financial impact study of the tentative agreement with a public hearing before it's adopted. Additionally, Virginia law prohibits any language that restricts your 100% fiscal control. You will have that just as you have it now. Under Virginia state code, uh, strikes are illegal, so that one's already been covered. So rather than harming the city and its workers, I see collective bargaining and negotiating great contracts using the employee voice. And I see that it can help attract and retain highly qualified workers. It can prevent worker burnout by reducing stress. It can attract diverse applicants to build a more diverse workplace or workforce. And it can improve employee working conditions, which helps them to create, repair, preserve, and protect our home, making Virginia Beach a safer, healthier, and better equipped city that is prepared to, better, to meet our future challenges. And who doesn't want that? Thank you. The next speaker is Max Bonanno, and then Mayor will move to the WebEx speakers. Good evening, honorable members of City Council, and thank you for taking the time to have this special session. I would ask that everybody who came here tonight to support collective bargaining, please stand. My name is Max Ganano, and I am president of Virginia Beach Professional Fire and EMS, IFF Local 2924, representing 570 active city employees who are voluntary union members and do pay dues. I am asking you to support collective bargaining for your city employees. From our perspective, the choice is clear. Collective bargaining contributes to a safer workplace. A 2021 academic study found that states with expanded collective bargaining rights for firefighters had fewer firefighter fatalities. Another report from the U.S. Department of Labor identified union workplaces as having less traumatic injuries and fatalities and better health and safety practices. Also, collective bargaining enhances recruitment and retention. In this labor market and with other Virginia localities moving forward with collective bargaining, it is essential that we start this process. Of the 50 largest cities in the United States, Virginia Beach is one of only five that does not have collective bargaining with any of its employees putting us in the bottom 10% for labor relations. And we are the largest locality in Virginia that has not authorized collective bargaining. When you collaborate with the people who do the work, it means a more efficient city and better services for residents. A Cornell University study of public sector collective bargaining found that cooperation results in improvements in both the delivery of public services and the quality of work life. For public safety, that means a safer city, which is best illustrated by the fact that civilian fire fatality rates are, on average, lower in states that provide these basic rights to firefighters and emergency medical workers. And another study in the American Journal of Public Health identified that collective bargaining contracts promote public health, which is a significant part of our job. I ask that you get past the misinformation and fear mongering that has been injected in this conversation and concentrate on the facts. Why should the city authorize collective bargaining? Ever since Congress enacted the National Labor Relations Act in 1935, which gave collective bargaining rights to everyone in the private sector, with limited exception, every construction tradesperson that builds a fire station has the right to organize and collectively bargain with their employer. Every machinist that assembles our self-contained breathing apparatus that we wear into fires 
has the right to organize and bargain with their employer. And every factory worker that builds our fire trucks and our police vehicles have the right to organize and bargain with their employer. The people who don't are the firefighters that live in that fire station, that wear that self-contained breathing apparatus into fires, and ride those fire trucks out in the community risking their lives, and you can change that. One last request is this. When you actually do take your vote on collective bargaining, remember how many stood in support and how few sat in opposition. Thank you. We'll, we'll now move to the WebEx speakers. The first WebEx speaker is Rachel LeVere. You are unmuted and may begin. Manager, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. My name is Rachel LeVere. I am a divorced mother of three little girls who hopefully you don't hear playing in the background. I'm also an employee of the city of Virginia Beach, a citizen of District 10, a voter, and a taxpayer of Virginia Beach. I'm trying desperately to afford to continue to live in the city that I proudly work for, but the cost of living in Virginia Beach is high and is quickly rising even higher. Many people my age are unable to afford to purchase a house or pay rents in our city. The Virginia Beach public school system provides a superior education in the Hampton Roads area, and I want my children to be able to benefit from the education system of the city I proudly work for. I am constantly concerned I will not be able to continue to provide for my children this opportunity for much longer. I also want the amazing people who work for our Virginia Beach Public Schools to have the ability to collectively bargain if they so choose. To assist them in continuing to provide an amazing education for my children while being supported, safe, and adequately compensated. Collective bargaining will allow the potential for my fellow city workers to negotiate as a collective for salary increases, benefits, improved working conditions, and other factors that will assist myself and many of my fellow co-workers to continue to live in the city we proudly work for and survive the rising costs of the Hampton Roads area. Individual negotiation using meet and confer will not provide the type of opportunities for negotiation that collective bargaining offers. Even if our existing system did provide the ability to negotiate our employee employment details directly with the city, the ability for the city to individually negotiate with all 7,500 of us and more would be an impossible feat and disparities are bound to occur. This is just one of the many reasons we need city council to approve a collective bargaining ordinance. I've heard a considerable amount of discussion on the financial implications of collective bargaining to taxpayers of the city of Virginia Beach. However, the city has multiple options at their disposal to alleviate many of these financial concerns and all budgetary items rest with city council. For instance, council could potentially explore the possibility of using funds currently allocated to vacant positions in order to fund the new FTEs that are anticipated to be required when implementing the collective bargaining ordinance. The anticipated cost of programming the new HR and payroll systems to account for the collective bargaining requirements right now will be far less than needing to adjust the system at a later date after the new system has already been implemented. I believe this fact was even stated by City, Mayor Duhaney, City Manager Duhaney in the meeting several months ago. The tools to cut the cost of collective bargaining are at the disposal of the members of City Council to alleviate those concerns. Esteemed Council members, I implore you to approve the collective bargaining ordinance and allow the workers of the city of Virginia Beach to have a seat at the bargaining table. I hope that our esteemed council members will consider the needs of myself and all of my fellow city workers when they vote to support a collective bargaining ordinance in Virginia Beach. Thank you. The next speaker is Lauren Gorin. You are unmuted and may begin. Thank you for this opportunity. My name my name is Laura Gorin, and I'm the research director at the Commonwealth Institute for Fiscal Analysis, a nonprofit organization that works to advance racial and economic justice in Virginia. I'm testifying today because research shows that collective bargaining benefits working people and communities as a whole. When employees are given adequate resources, appropriate staffing levels, and an enhanced voice in the workplace through collective bargaining, turnover decreases and it becomes easier to recruit and retain new employees. There's also broader benefits, including fostering social mobility, more engaged community members and workers advocating for better public services, raising labor standards uh, across the board, lowering poverty, and reducing expenditures on safety net programs. Furthermore, due to the cumulative impact of past and present systemic discrimination, Workers of color are often in lower paid positions, face more barriers to employment, and are the most likely to benefit from the strong protections of collective bargaining. 
The fair and clear standards provided by unionization particularly help Black and Latino workers in both the public and private sector, according to recent research by the Economic Policy Institute. And because women are more likely than men to work in the public sector, strong collective bargaining rights can help address the broader problem of gender pay disparities. Working people coming together to advance workplace policies and public policies that improve their communities and their own lives have been critical in expanding access to economic opportunity around the world. And it's also a fundamental human right. Thank you for your time and consideration of the benefits of a strong collective bargaining ordinance that recognizes the rights of all city employees. The next speaker is Gretchen Hill. Ms. Hill, you are unmuted and may begin. And Hill with the Hampton Roads Chamber, representing over 1,200 businesses and 6,000 members in the area, many of which are located in the city of Virginia Beach. The Hampton Roads Chamber opposes the legislation in 2021 when the General Assembly created this option for localities and their individual departments to establish collective bargaining agreements. The opposition at the time was based on the impact to services and increase to taxes that would be realized as a result of collective bargaining. In a year where city council is focused on lowering real estate tax rates, because you've heard that this is what your constituents want, supporting an action like this could result in these taxes being raised again in the near future to meet the demands of the new contracts created under collective bargaining. While there is one group currently applying for collective bargaining status, other departments will begin to ask for this if it's approved, expanding the cost even further to the city. This eventually would take time and resources away from regular city business, as well as likely result in tax increases to meet the demands of the agreements. City management knows what the departments need and they do not need a third party intervening in the process. I appreciate your time to meet and thank you very much. The next speaker is Robert Dean. Mr. Dean, you're unmuted and may begin. On behalf of the Tidewater Liberty Partners, my service in the Marine Corps, my years in corporate American service to my community of Virginia Beach has exposed me to what it means to be an American. Never in all of my 83 years did I ever think the word ashamed would rise up and hit me in the face, but it has with this movement to unionize our city workforce. I feel so sorry for the beach taxpayers who have no idea the millions of new taxes that will have to be raised to start up and maintain the human resource personnel that will have to be hired. And this initiative is being pushed through by the quasi-union bosses who will be looking for a sweet union salary deal. I say to those city employees who are, who are so disgusted with their jobs and working conditions to simply quit. And where will they find a job in any of the surrounding cities that have better working conditions than Virginia Beach? They won't. And for the new hires, why did you join the city's workforce if it was such a horrible job? One of the highest paid and best working jobs in the city in working in the fire department. If it wasn't, there would be on man empty trucks in the fire station. And throwing in the false claims about working condition also makes me feel ashamed and disappointed. Disappointed that the city manager isn't able to manage our city. That simply is a false statement. And for the public's information, there are firefighters making six figures. City Council members, you are sitting around the dais representing all the people in Virginia Beach, all the families struggling to make their mortgage or rent payments, paying their health care payments and any, without any city subsidies, trying to put food on their tables and paying their children's dental bills. And if any of you are supporting this slap in the face to our status as a right to work state, please speak up and tell the tens of thousands of Beach families you represent exactly how many millions of that tax dollars you're going to throw away every year on this great American con job. Selfish can be described as the unions focus less on salary and working conditions, but rather maximizing the number of members for the dues they'll collect to pay the union bosses six figure salaries. And have you ever heard of any of these union supporters talk about increased productivity or better job performance? And you won't. Allow corrective bargaining foot in the door and the unions will control not only the city manager, but they'll also control the council members. In closing, have any of you on council asked Centera Health Systems or Steel Corporation why they don't have unions? Virginia has honored its right to work laws since 1947 and we have to maintain that. 
Unions have no place in Virginia, none whatsoever. Collective bargaining and unions are only going to destroy Virginia's right to work and destroy our high manufacturing standards, overhaul workplace productivity, and they're going to destroy our lower tax burdens. We cannot afford unions. We cannot afford collective bargaining. Thank you. The last speaker is Georgia Allen. Um, I understand Ms. Allen is not online. Mayor, that is all the speakers. Okay, thank you all very much for coming and participating. We are adjourned.